next. Okay, so this is the uh, second talk of the Pi Bay Data Track for today. So we've got Alexander uh, talking about... Now, I had a quick word with him before, and he said the best way to describe this is an ode to pandas indexes. So uh, over to Alexander. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Tom. So um, I couldn't help doing that, actually. So... Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Alexander. I'm I'm from Germany. I'm uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, I'm one of the EuroPython organizers. Uh, we just closed PyCon DE, which I helped organizing yesterday as well. So we just had a closing session yesterday. Uh, so I like to be very active in the Python community, and I love data. And that's why on a, my day job, I work with a consultancy. We're a small uh, strategic consultancy for data science and. Uh, transformation and all that stuff. So, since we're short on time, let's you can talk to me about that later if you're interested. So, pandas indexes. I think pandas indexes are often in every beginner tutorial, super often, always just overseen, never mentioned. So, who works with pandas daily? What are you doing here? <laughs> okay, who has used pandas often but struggled? Okay, so so to get everybody up to speed, so I'm going to talk about the indexes, various index types. Um, my favorite, the daytime index and uh, categorical index, and we're going to do it in our uh, life in Jupyter Notebooks. So to bring everybody up to speed, just like a little introduction about the, the data models in uh, Pandas users and also uh, how the whole indexing thing works and where you actually might struggle. So let's just switch to the demo. No, just the appropriate. Turn it off. So, so I think. Can you read that in the back? I hope. So, I'm trying to stay on top. So, okay, just stop. So, just like a little, little refresher. So. Um, the, the, the one of the basic uh, data uh, like uh, um, building blocks of pandas are the series actually. Everything's built out of series. So basically um, we can create a series just from any Python array. We get back a series and if you print it out, you probably mentioned there's already this thing here and that's actually the index. Since we did not define it before, it's just like a positional index. And as we see, that's where the power from pandas comes from. It's typed. It's not just like a Python array, which is not, um, it, which is uh, dynamically typed or strongly typed. This is really typed. Um, that's NumPy under the hood, and that's where the power comes from. Um, you can see we can build like indexes from also for floats, and also if there's like one float in an, in an array of um, uh, integers, of course, it, the float will infect the rest because we only have one data type to choose. Same applies for strings, of course. If you have one string, it will infect everything else and make it a string and object and probably not too not so nice to do calculations with. Um, there's also like a, a little caveat you probably fell into already and have noticed yet. Pandas, if you have a, 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 a null value um, in uh, integer series, it will make it a float because uh, uh, NAND is not supported yet in NumPy, which is under the hood. So uh, don't worry, um, you can still get rid of them, but we won't cover it today. So um, one of the nicest thing, and it's very Pythonic, to, to select stuff in Pandas. So we can just ask for the first element, asking for um, the element in series zero. Um, we can do slicing and we can use, and I absolutely, if you're new to pandas or if you struggle with this, use the methods. There's, uh, there are two methods. One is iLock, which is I'm just showing here. Um, and notice iLock uses square brackets, not parentheses. And um, yeah, you can just like take a slice and um, get a pop back. So far, so good. This feels very Pythonic. This feels really natural. Um, we can also use uh, labels because the series is basically a, a NumPy array which has labels. So let's just change the index, our magical structure in the background. So if you look at the series, we just now have some, an alphabetical label ring from A to J. Um, we still have the same data type and we can just access everything like in a dictionary. Um, 
just like C. We can use the lock method for that. And if you have a hard time remembering, it's really easy. Like locate something by a label, being like string or something else, like a chapel or something. And if you want to locate something by position, uh, I lock is like inter locate by integer. So if we do something with an integer, usually we use an I in Python. So it's really we can even slice by these labels, which is <coughs> nice. Um, and we also yeah can, but we're still able to access anything where um, the position. So um, what about not unique, non unique indexes? Because you've seen probably like all indexes, they were unique. So let's see. So um, I'm resetting the index to Gattaca X, Y, Z. And we can still have a look. Yeah, G is nice. Um, but if we, for example, try to slice here now, which had the work before, if we try to slice from G to A, we receive an error, of course, it's ambiguous. We have uh, two A's, we have two T's, so this not, doesn't work. Although, Pandas is still very smart to see, okay, yeah, I have some, a unique series from X to Z, and we can still get that back. You can also, like, and I think the since these are, like, set and maintained, it's, it's really good if you have, like, also, like, a bigger data set, you can also, is, it, is the index monothonic? So, um, just like dot index, dot is monothonic, and you will just get it back true or false values. Um, so let's reset the index again to something uh, positional. So now we have back again our series from zero to uh, nine. Um, I don't know why that's twice, so that's just a repetition. So um, you can also like ask immediately, is it unique? Is it monothonic? And you can even ask if it's decreasing or increasing with this monothonic increasing or decreasing. And let's switch back to here. So now we've learned about um, series. Um, so the, 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 the series is the, is the building, basic building block. So as I explained already, we use these powerful NumPy arrays in the back. They are labeled, and actually labeled NumPy array is what we call a pandas series. This is a concept which is actually borrowed from the R language. Um, and what is a data frame? A data frame is just like a two-dimensional series, what you will probably also refer to as a label, and we also still use um, a terminology like rows and label if we work or speak with, about pandas. So basically, multiple series make a data frame and they're actually glued together by these index values. You probably might not see them because the resolution is low, so here are all the indexes and they're all the same. Um, this is a really nice and powerful concept um, to do fancy stuff, as we will see later. Um, so there, there's also like what the uh, panel 3D, um, but this has been deprecated, so if you stumble across it, um, I told you about it, but you can immediately forget about it. Because um, uh, you can move multi-indexes, which I will I show you, uh, which will I show you later. Um, for that, um, hardly anyone used it, that's why it has just been deprecated. Fun fact is, the pan in pandas is actually coming from um, panels, so yeah. Okay. Um, Let's go back to our notebooks. Okay, um, so let me show you a little bit about slicing and how to work with two-dimensional uh, data. Um, so this is just like a simple 10 by 10 data frame. Uh, we can, and this is just like the change, and I think something easy to remember, if we now just ask for something by position, we get the column back. So we get a series back, no longer the rows. And I think if you're new, to many beginners in, uh, in pandas have a, a problem because very often also programmers we more think in rows and loops. And now we have you have to basically think a little bit like 90 degrees turn now. So it's it's all series now. Um, so okay, so far so good. I think we can remember that. So let's do um, a slice. And as we see, okay, ooh, if we do a slice, we get the rows back. And there's some reasons for that, but I think this is really hard for beginners to, to really get so. Especially if you go and ask for help and you go to Stack Overflow and you find some solution and you're probably not aware I am I, whether you're working on a series or on a data frame and the behavior is different and that might really be, give you a really hard time. So, here as well, um, you just lose 
ilock and unlock methods. They work here as well um, as here. Um, see here, so we also can see a segment. So uh, on data frames, uh, the lock and methods uh, take accept two parameters. So in the first, we have uh, axis uh, zero, and the second is axis one. And actually, this is something which gave me a really hard time in the beginning as well, because what's this axis all about? Because Pandas is very good in also having like really well-chosen default parameters. So you don't have to pass any axis around, and then you see all this stuff. What's this axis stuff? Yeah. So basically, it's very simple. It's just like x and y axis. Um, and if you need to remember what zero, zero is just like horizontal. And if you want to remember what's axis one, yeah, axis one is vertical and basically looks like a one. Um, just like to, to remember a little bit. Okay, um, if you want to do a column slice, it's really simple as well. We can just like pass in um, two dots and just ask for the columns we want. Um, so um, the same way as it would work in Python, if you want to just copy a list or get everything from um, an array. Okay, and the same applies for text labels. So let's create some text labels. So I'm just like here, um, I'm creating two um, text labels for the um, uh, indexes and the columns. And let's see how that works. Okay. And the same applies now as we've learned before for the series. We can ask for directly for a column and just by name, and we get the column back. Uh, this is usually the best way because. Most of the times your columns will have some headers anyway, so you will likely access them by some name. Um, you can uh, slice uh, and just ask for a bunch of rows. Uh, subtle difference here, if you work by position, of course it's Pythonic, it's, um, it's, 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 it's always like the end is the first not to take, and for the labels it's inclusive, so the right parameter like uh, behind double dots is inclusive if you ask for text labels, um, because they might not be sequential. Um, so, um, well, the same for the lock. And we, if you want to take a segment, just like pass in both parameters. So basically it's very straightforward. Okay, let's move to our next uh, uh, sample set. And let's welcome to the Bluth online store. Uh, the Bluth online store is an online store. It sells the 10, yeah, it's so good to be in a country where people know I rest the development. Yeah. Germany, nobody gets this. Um, so, so it tells the, the it sells like the ten most popular products all the time: Toyota Corolla, iPads, iPhone, um, and bananas for ten dollars. Um, so let's have a peek into that. So um, a good practice is always. So we see here like uh, we have a name, we have a birthday, a customer, an order date a product unit and a unit price. And, uh, and it's already um, a nice uh, data set, so we already have the right data types. Uh, we don't need to change any data types. And, and it's really easy to work with data in Pandas. There's um, a concept called Boolean indexing, or it's also referred to as masking. And basically what it does is it just gives you back two false values. So if you can just like take a series, say, give me everything back, greater 40 um, and you will get true false back and then you basically do a selection here with uh, just ask for where everything is basically returning true here um, get that from my data frame and here we go we all only see units uh, of um, more than 40 here okay you're probably familiar with that already um, <coughs> We can also like combine these, uh, so uh, subtle differences. Uh, so here, this is like an AND statement. So uh, uh, we just pass in an ampersand for uh, combining an AND, or we can use the, the pipe uh, here for, oops, no, not so much, no. uh, a pipe for OR. Um, subtle differences, uh, sometimes overseeing, you have to put these statements in parentheses then to have them work. Um, so let's see here, okay, looks pretty good. And here. Something I really struggled in the beginning where like when I did the, I did the grouping and I I have more like a database background so I was okay I get a group back and this and I was not really aware in the beginning group by gives you back a multi-index so what I did when I did a group by so let's just create something which we can group um, so Imagine this being like hotels, they have uh, three categories, they are in a city, they have a country, and they have some ratings. And now, uh, if I want to do an analysis, 
we just can go here and do a group by and ask for the name. So see, okay, this is really nice. We have like the countries, it's, it's nicely displayed in the browser. We see it by categories and pandas is that smart, only uh, uh, giving us back mean values for numerical data. Okay, so far so good. So, if, and I think it's already also good always like to say, to see what's actually here. So let's ask for the index. And if we, we just did the grouping, ask for the mean, so we got <coughs> something back. So we got a data frame back. And if we look at the index, it's actually a multi-index. And a multi-index is not something like uh, super uh, um, understandable. It's, it's actually bas really basic and simple to understand. It's just like multi -le multiple levels of lists here. So we see on the first level, we have all the countries. The second level are the cities. Third level, the categories. And it's really very simple, basically. And you can also ask for the levels. So we see here. And if we ask for the names, they still maintain the column names here. Um, so if you want to have like uh, displayed it like uh, sparse, you can turn it off, just like if you feel like that. So, but um, I like it sparse actually. Let's turn it on again. Um, we can um, also explicitly just ask for the values on a certain level. So here we just I am asking like, okay, give me back on the uh, second level. Uh, we get the categories back. First level, the city, uh, second level, sorry, which one, zero indexed. Um, I'm getting back the cities back. We, and now we can just like easily access anything in our um, uh, data frame being multi-indexed just with the log method and ask, okay, give me back everything, just like the little bit for Germany, and I get these two cities and Mannheim back, and if you <coughs> wonder why is there's Mannheim, Mannheim's my hometown. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and then it's, okay, thank you. Then it's really easy to, uh, to access, just like walk down the path, pass in tuples, and um, yeah, and then you get, we could just like get the average pricing back. And we even can ask like just for minimum, maximum, and the minimum, maximum will be by column, not like at all, and yeah. I think you get the idea, I have to speed up a little bit. And if you're not familiar with working with the multi-index, you can also like unstack it and basically get new columns there. But I think if you know how to slice, I think it's multi-indexes are really handy to work with. So now my favorite, the daytime index. The daytime index, here's a simple data set here from uh, it's just like some temperatures. So we have a timestamp Celsius um, and we see, okay, um, we have to convert the timestamp, so let's do that. Uh, so now we, uh, I'm, I'm creating, I'm resetting the index actually. I'm creating a new index, which is now a timestamp. Now we see the index is no longer positional. It's now a timestamp. If you look at it, you actually see timestamps. We can ask, is it monophonic? It's not. Is it unique? Yeah, probably only one sensor. And if we plot it now, uh, also pandas is not smart to instruct so it's not an audit fashion in our plots already, just by assigning a daytime index. So Pandas is really smart doing that. Um, we can do a grouping directly um, with working here with the index values. So there's no need if you want to do a plot by a year or week, as we do here, just like to create an extra series or column to do. You can actually immediately ask the indexes and the daytime index will give, will give you back year, weeks, days, hours, it's really anything, anything you want. Um, even if you work at a hedge fund, any, anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Pandas was created at a hedge fund, that's why we have all the business stuff there. Um, yeah, the same here, um, I think you get the idea. Another nice thing is, of course, you also like to, to add the ag method. Let me move it a little here. And you can, and the ag method also accepts multiple uh, functions. So here we just ask for the minimum, minimum, uh, minimum, maximum, and we can immediately plot it from here. Okay. Also, if you ever uh, thought, okay, weather on the weekend is not that good as it used on, is it on, as on work days, we can find out easily. We can just like create new, two new series, add them. Is it a weekday? Is it a weekend? One thing is here also to, to remember pandas. Here is um, uh, Monday is actually zero. Um, so what what we did here, I did here is just like do a grouping. Um, we, we just do um, two plots, whether it's a weekend or a weekday, and we just like plot the mean 
uh, temperatures over the day, and we see, oh, okay, yeah, actually on the weekends it's getting a little bit, it's more getting warmer earlier. And that was just like a free liner. I think that's really handy. Another nice thing is um, to select by ranges, uh, and you can just pass strings in here and just like um, select the date range, which is really simple. Um, and we can do the same, just like also supports, of course, uh, Boolean indexes, so we can just get the hours back from between 12 or 4 o'clock in the evening there. So, something else, um, once we have a daytime index, we can also resample. So it's really easy to resample our data um, by day, which is letter upper letter D, and ask for the maxim maximum, um, we can resample by month. This is just like a tiny data set here. Um, but you can even come up with your own stuff and resample by three days. And the same, you could do the same with minimum, maximum as well if you just pipe ag there and plot it. Um, here's a little oversight. I'm going to publish this later anyway, so I don't want to go too deep in it. But on the left side, you see all the super business stuff, and on the left side, I see the usual people stuff. Um, last, uh, last one minute. Do I have one minute left? It depends how many questions you've got. No oh, question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got four minutes straight. Oh, okay. I'll kind of relax. Super cool. Okay. So far, so good. Um, categorical. Uh, categorical is uh, something really nice in, in Pandas. So let's go back to our booth store. And as I told you already, it's um, it's a data set with uh, selling only ten products. So um. You usually might guess already there's a lot of repetition because here uh, we have a thousand entries here. Um, let's see the memory usage. Okay, no, already here, see, um, down here, we already have an indicator on the memory usage. And why is there a plus? It's so precise, 54.8 kilobytes, why a plus? Um, the plus is actually, um, Pandas is only uh, here in this uh, info oversight. It only gives you back uh, what's been used for the references. So here are only the references to the text objects um, uh, being into account. So actually, it's not the memory your data frame actually uses in your memory. Um, but you can find out with the um, memory usage. And we, yeah doesn't look that different, so let's pass in another um, parameter called deep true, and we see the name, the customer, and the products, where we have repetition um, as well, are pretty large compared to our other, other data. So, um, let's find out. And a categorical is basically a simple thing. Um, if you're familiar with databases, just like databases 101 on um, relational databases, what could we do? Yeah, we can just like move all the redundant or repeti repeti repeating data <laughs> to uh, another data structure like a look lookup table. Um, this is what I'm doing here with sales data as type. Um, I just have to pass in a dictionary um, and the category is basically I'm instructing please give for these uh, series put these data types so they all category. Cate for category, so let's move that over here and see what we get. Um, we see it's already less. And if we just like look what we saved here, we saved like more than 50% on the names and we and product is down to 3% of our memory usage. So that, that's pretty neat and also like uh, it's uh, it can save you a lot of memory and make also your all everything faster because it's probably just like some integers um, pandas now has to take into account and not um, strings and strings are expensive in uh, the stuff we do. Um, the final um, thing I want to show with category is you, you can also have them ordered so let's create something like this this is just like some uh, letters um, and you can just like create a category or do something. We can also do something like if you have like a, a survey, you have something probably like values, bad, neutral, nice, good, excellent. But here we can also create a category and actually have them ordered. And then we can ask, okay, what's, what's actually the minimum here? And the minimum is bad. And it's no longer an alphabetical order. Yeah, we can also for the cost for the maximum. Mm. And we see excellent. 
And so it's really good. And you can even select stuff like just asking everything above greater than good. And Pandas will give you back the results. And uh, that's it. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, <laughs>